Here's how I turned Hyperland from just another Wayland compositor into a complete and full desktop environment. So let me show you the features that I have included in my setup right now. First of all, let's say I have a bunch of windows open, okay? This is the layout that I have. These are the windows that I have open. Fantastic. Amazing. Now, if I wanted title bars, all I have to do is just press a button and I would get access to title bars. Let's say I wanted an overview, okay? You've seen that overview that you have in GNOME or KDE, right? Where basically you press a button and then with the press of a button, you see the entirety of all of your windows all at once. Well, I can do that as well by pressing Alt-Q, my mod key and Q. Now, yes, this is what I will be showing you later on. So stay tuned for that, okay? But yeah, you get the idea. This is what you see when it comes to the overview. Okay, then if I just want to turn the title bars off, I can just press mod key shift Y, and that will turn the title bars off. Then of course, we have the logout menu as well, which is a key thing that you find in many desktop environments. So there's a logout menu. And then we have a lock screen. This is a lock screen we have. Okay, and this lock screen also adapts to whatever music is playing. Right now there's nothing playing, so you won't be able to see it. But it does do that as well. It does display the song right over here. Then there is also a menu over here. Okay, there is this menu for basically controlling different aspects of your computer. Let's say I wanted to clear all my notifications, I can do that like so. Okay, I can turn on do not disturb turn it off, then I can control the volume using this slider over here. As you can see, as you can see, the volume is actively updating this mute toggle works along with all of the other controls over here. So that is for notifications, not to mention, there is also a pop up every single time I increase or decrease brightness or volume, which is exactly the behavior that you would see inside of a desktop environment. Okay, then we have all of that. Let's see what else do we have. Okay, then of course, we have an app launcher as usual, then there's also a calculator over here. So I can type in 23 plus 25, something like that, and calculate anything that I need. And that's pretty much it. Those are the main parts of a desktop environment, right? There are a couple more parts, which I will show you right now. Let, let's say, for example, if I type in PK exec. So another crucial part of a desktop environment is that anytime an app requires privilege escalation, which basically means anytime you need pseudo rights or basically root rights in order to execute something, there will be a password box which shows up. So if I type in PK exec pacman syu, what will happen is you get this password box. So that is something that is characteristic of a desktop environment as well. You can just type this in and it'll update the computer. That is another thing. And let's actually show you what other different parts of a desktop environment exist, because we need to know what we're working with before I can actually tell you how to go about doing it. Okay, so if we look at desktop environment in Wikipedia, we should find a list of desktop environments not list of environments, but basically what a desktop environment is. So here we see in the wiki, just click here. Okay, now there should be different parts of a desktop environment here. If we don't find that here, we can actually just go to the arch wiki and then be able to find it over there. So let's actually do that. Let's go to arch wiki. And here, let's scroll down, we should be able to find all the components provided by desktop environments. So application launcher that you've already identified, audio control is facilitated through power control. Okay, so if I want to control my output, I do that through power control here, which is also working. If I press this button, it should open. Sometimes it doesn't open because the way bar isn't configured. But yeah, as you can see, it opens it over here. Okay, that is for audio, then we have backlight control, which is brightness, which you see here. Compositor, Wayland itself, I mean, Hyperland itself is a compositor. Default applications, okay, this one is a fun one. Let's say that you wanted to open an app, okay? Or let's say that you wanted to open a file, but then it was of an unknown type. Let's say it was probably a .bac file. Let's actually create a test.txt.bac. Okay, and then here we'll just type hello. Let's say you wanted to open this. By default, what would happen is the computer, okay, your environment wouldn't know what app to open this with by default, but you can actually configure Hyperland to know what app to open this by default. So that's what default apps means. Okay, where is that default apps? If you double click here, yeah, see, this is what you get. So if you actually want to fix this, there is a file that you have to edit in order to put on put the apps that are going to open certain file types, 
So that's a thing. Then display manager, that is SCDM. I've made a video on the exact display manager that I use in the past before. So if you want, you can check that out. Logout dialog, which I've shown you. Media control. Now let's actually go ahead and play a song. Okay, here we have a song which is currently playing. There you go. This is the media module and same thing shows up in the lock screen. That's what I was talking about. Along with the weather, of course, but that takes a second to load. Okay. Then we have a notification daemon, which works, right? I can send any notification that I want. Notify send hello. Ta-da. That sends a notification. And then we have a poll kit authentication agent, which is basically privilege escalation through a password box. Power management. Now, for power management, I've made a video on it in the past, but basically, you just have to use auto CPU frec, because this is the better device to manage power instead of using power profiles daemon. Oh, and by the way, Spotify, along with Discord, along with basically every single app, is themed a particular way, right? If you notice, here, Spotify, over here, then Discord over here, and then also VS Codium, they're all themed in a particular way. Now, best part about my setup is that I'm actually able to change the theme depending on whichever theme that I choose. So let's say I have a list of themes over here, okay? Let's pick a different theme, something like Everforest. Now, as soon as I pick that theme, every single app reloads itself automatically, as you can see over here, in order to adapt itself to the current theme that's currently selected. Everything from the application launcher to the logout menu to the lock screen to basically every single app that you can possibly think of. This is Spotify here, then you have Discord, then you have VS Codium. This also applies to terminal apps as well, along with GTK4 apps that you see over here. Okay, this is GTK4. Now, let's say I wanted to change the theme to something like Rose Pine. I just change the theme and let's say I open Nautilus again. Sometimes you have to type kill all dash nine Nautilus. And then if you re re reopen it, it works. Same goes for all of the other apps, okay? If you just reload Spotify, this is what you see. So if you want to know how to make something like this, that is exactly what I teach you inside of Hyper Accelerator, which is a program, first link in the description. So here, inside of the theme switcher module, I teach you exactly how you can make something like this for yourself. Okay, so inside of this module, which is two hours long, as you can see here, I tell you exactly what a theme switcher is, and then I go about, I show you flowcharts and stuff, and then I actually dive into the code of how you're supposed to go about implementing this. So the exact step-by-step, -step, here's how you can get this for yourself. And I don't just give you the dot files. I don't just like hand it over to you and then say, go figure it out yourself. I teach you and then I guide exactly how you're supposed to implement everything so that in case something breaks, you're able to fix it and not just go onto Reddit crying for help, right? Because I've been there and it's not fun. Sometimes, or rather most of the time, your problem isn't even solved and you're just fucking pissed off because your problem isn't solved, right? So instead of having to deal with that, it's better if you just learn how to do it yourself so that not only do you feel proud of your own creation because you didn't copy it from anyone else, in case of any issues, you're able to actually troubleshoot it and get it solved instead of just suffering with the issue, okay? So first link in the description, I show you exactly how to do it if you want to learn. I'd be happy to help you out. Okay, now let's walk through the rest of this. Then we have power management, which I mentioned you was using auto CPU frec. Screen capture is through OBS, which I'm using here. Then we have screen locker, which you've already seen. Screen temperature, yes, this one's a fun one. I'm using nightlight, okay? So this, I'm using WL sunset in order to change whether the system is currently being displayed inside of night mode or not. So if I show you that, actually, it's inside of .local bin night mode .sh. So this is a very simple script, right? It just checks whether WL Sunset is running. If it's not running, you run it, you kill it, and then you say it's off. If it is running, or if actually if it's not running, then you just start it. That's it. That is all this script does. And then we have screen temperature, which I just discussed. Then we have a wallpaper setter, which actually ties in to this theme switcher over here. That is what the wallpaper setter is all about. Okay, let's change this to something like Kanagawa. As you can see, this is the transition that we see when it comes to changing wallpapers. Now, along with this, I've also implemented a waybar theme switcher over here. So if I wanted to, let's say, switch the waybar theme, I can do so like so. 
And this also adapts to whatever colors that I'm using. Let's say I switch to something like Grovebox. Main Grovebox colors are used here. Let's say I switch Waybar theme to something like Ultra Minimal. This is what happens. And then I can also change to something like Waybar V1. This is what you see. So on and so forth, right? For the other themes as well. I teach you how to make this as well in the program. So if you want to know how to do that, you can just go ahead and check it out. Okay, let's go back. Now, how are you actually supposed to go about doing this? Well, there are two ways, right? One way is you can do it manually. All you have to do is just figure out which app you're supposed to get, okay? Like, I'll give you an example for each of these ones. So for App Launcher, I'm currently using Rafi. And for audio control, as I just mentioned, I'm using Pavu control. So you can install that with just yay s Pavu, Pavu control on Arch. Then for backlight control, that's using Brightness CTL. For compositor, that's Hyperland, of course. Default applications. How you can configure this is you can either use a text file or you can just double click on whichever app that needs to be configured. And here you can just type in something like this. So let's see here. Maybe we can use NVIM, okay? So Kitty dash dash hold kitty dash dash hold in vim now what that's going to do is basically launch kitty with neovim and open this file so that's what you see you can just configure your file manager you can configure default apps through your file manager or you can use a text file you can use a file called xdg file okay basically that file exists if i just show you where that is it's inside of dot config config okay if we just type ls should be somewhere here yeah my maps dot list you just have to go and edit config my maps dot list okay we're already in config so just open my maps dot list and here inside of added associations and default applications you're just supposed to put in the application type followed by the desktop file dot desktop file so you put that in and then you're done. Now, if we look for .bak here, .back, it's not here, probably because it saved it in a different place, but otherwise, this is how it works. Okay, then we have display manager. For that, you can use SDDM. That's the best display manager in order to customize it, right? Because not many other display managers give you the same level of control that SDDM does, because it's extremely customizable. If you wanted to change any single part, of SDDM because it's just written in QML. You can learn QML and then just change whatever part that you want to. You can have the text of the clock be in the center. You can have the password box be in the center. Maybe if you're a little bit weird, you can have the clock over to the left side and then you can have the, what do you call it? Password box somewhere over here. Okay, that would actually look pretty sick though. Not gonna lie. But yeah, you can do all of that with SDDM. So I just recommend that you get that instead. Then, for logout dialog, I'm using W logout. So this is W logout, whichever you see here. Then media control, that's just through Waybot. You can install a custom module called custom slash media, which I've explained how to do in a different video. Then for notification daemon, I'm using Sway and C. This is Sway and C that you see here. Then Polkit authentication agent, that is going to be, I think it is GNOME Polkit. Let me actually show you exactly what it is. So that would pretty much be GNOME Polkit. Let's see here, auto start. And that would be, yes, Polkit GNOME. That's what it is for. Then we have power management. For that, I'm using auto CPU frec. Okay, auto CPU frec. This is what it looks like. You can choose your default governor. You can set it to default, which changes depending on whether you're plugged in or not, or you can just set it to performance and then always be like plugged in basically have the best performance if you're not going to be unplugging your laptop very much. Okay, that's what you can do. And let me actually show you how to install this. If I show you a yay dash ss, that would be auto CPU frec. CPU frec. Yeah, here. All you have to do is just install this. I have the chaotic AUR so I can use that instead. So I don't have to compile auto CPU frec. But otherwise, it's a pretty small small program so you won't have to compile too much okay then we have screen capture which is obs as i showed you earlier then screen locker that is hyperlock i've showed you how to configure hyperlock in a previous video so you can check that out and screen temperature that is wl sunset now inside of the hyper ecosystem there's actually an app called hyper sunset 
But what happens is sometimes hyper sunset doesn't work when you go full screen. Let's say you're watching a YouTube video at 6 p.m. at night and you don't want your eyes to absolutely burn and bleed to death because you still need to be able to see and fall asleep, right? So instead of basically keeping the filter on your screen, hyper sunset for whatever reason just turns it off when you go full screen. So instead of having to deal with that, you can just use WL sunset and then skip that issue entirely. Then for the wallpaper setter, I'm using SWWW. So SWWW, IMG, pictures, wallpapers, and then I can pick whichever wallpaper that I want from here. And that gives me the beautiful transition that you saw earlier. It gives me this transition. Now you need a couple of different arguments in order to pass to SIU or basically that same app to get the same effect. So that would be something like so IMG, let's just give it a picture, pictures, wallpapers. Let's pick this one. Okay, you would have to give it transition FPS, 144, transition step, which basically dictates whether there is a mixing, okay, whether there is a blurring of the transition between the current image and the new image. It's just better if I show you. So you can set that to 255 so that there is no blurring. And then we have transition type center or it can also be wipe so if i hit enter this is the transition that you see now let's say i change transition step to something like 55 and then i change the wallpaper to something completely different say i pick this one as you can see there's a slight bit of a blurring effect that you see over there okay so if you don't want that you can set it to 255 and then just have it be completely clean. You won't be able to notice it if you're not paying attention, but yeah, that is what transition step is all about. So it's 255, this is what the transition looks like. There's no blurring at the edges, nothing, none of that stuff, and this is what it looks like. So actually, that's method number one. I've given you all the apps. All you have to do is just go, go ahead and figure out how to rice it yourself. But let's say that you wanted somebody to hold your hand and then walk you through each of these apps and how exactly to configure them so that they look as good as this. Well, that is exactly what I show you inside of Hyper Accelerator, which is a program. First link in the description, right? So if I actually show you where exactly this is, it's in a module called Desktop Dynamism, right? Here I cover all the parts of making Hyperline into a desktop environment, which is your lock screen, then your app launcher, logout menu, poll kit, screen capture, mymaps.list, which is how exactly you're supposed to write to that file that I showed you earlier. Hyper Idle, yes, of course, how to turn Hyperline into a desktop environment clearly includes idling because let's say you're on GNOME, okay? Default behavior, if you're inactive, is for the display to first turn off and then later, 30 minutes later, approximately, to suspend. So I teach you how to do that as well. Then the notification center. If I click on this, pretty sure this is a two and a half hour long module. Let's just reload so you can see it. Let's go here. Scroll down. Click on this. Okay. Takes a second to load, but you get the drill, right? This is another two and a half hour long module where basically I show you the code and everything else that goes into making something like this. So if you want something you like a step-by-step -step tutorial, but basically you have one philosophy, you have one vision as to how to create a setup, you're not taking advice from a million different people. First link in the description, the program, that's for you. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising.